ready to worship and praise the Lord together. Are we all? Yeah. Give me some monitor up here. I can't hear myself. All right. We want to go to the Lord together in prayer. Uh, we want to remember a neighbor, a brother and sister Greenlee, uh, only 62 years old, suddenly died in her sleep. And uh, we have a visitation this evening that the Greenleafs uh, going by there. And we want to pray for that family. Only 62 years old. So let's believe the Lord for a miracle. Um, our, with their families and comfort and strength that they need in this hour. Um, when you get my age, 62, um, is a whole lot younger than what it was when I was <coughs> teenager. Amen. I'm 62 with ancient days, but now that I am past that, it's, um, it's a young age to slip out into eternity. So let's pray for this family that God will comfort and strengthen them. Also, we want to pray for our sister Tammy and Helen, having some problems with vertigo. Never had that. Um, pray you never will. That's not a very fun thing to have. They will been, been there, done that. And so let's pray for Sister Tammy and God will touch her. Sister Francia uh, Fernandez um, scheduled to go home today, I believe, this morning. If we heard, Lord, I know she went home uh, today. We want to continue to pray for her uh, that God will just strengthen her and give her a speedy recovery. We also want to pray for Amber. Um, some of you remember her, Amber Buxton. Uh, of course, it's Anderson now. Been waiting uh, for quite some time for uh, a donor to uh, uh, her heart and a kidney. She need a heart and a kidney trench. My mind is just as blank as it could be right now. Transplant, I'm sorry. For some reason, she hit my mind. So, um, one did come available, and so this morning, uh, they did the, uh, the heart, and if I understand it right, they're going to uh, go in tomorrow and do the kidneys. Hard for me to understand them doing both so close together, but I guess they know what they're doing. But uh, she called us, uh, I guess it was yesterday, and uh, asked that we pray for her. And so we want to pray that God will touch Amber and uh, just that everything will go well. Not heard anything from the surgery today yet. Hopefully, we'll get some information soon. Uh, but let's pray that all will go well tomorrow. Also, if that uh, God will just uh, help her and strengthen her. And tell you, she's she suffered for quite some time. Just a young lady, how old is she? Amber. Thirty-four. Thirty, I think. So, uh, sweet girl. We love Amber. So let's. Keep her in our prayers tonight. Uh, those that are out of town, we have some who are out of town tonight. We pray that God will keep his hands of protection upon them. And uh, if you have needs you want us to have, we pray about slip your hand up, God knows what they are. Let's believe the Lord to hear and answer. You believe we serve a God that's able? Not only is he able, he is well able. To do exceeding abundantly of all, we're able to ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Let's believe the Lord to hear and answer prayer right now. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful for the wonderful privilege we have to be in your house tonight and bring these needs to you. We have confidence and faith in our hearts that your spirit is going to intervene and do the work that needs to be done. And all of these that we have mentioned tonight, we're believing you for miracles of healing. Touch Sister Tammy Helen right now. Let her feel the mighty touch of your healing virtuous power. In the name of Jesus, touch Sister Francia. Let her feel the touch of your healing power right now. Strengthen her, Lord. Give her a 
push me to recovery, we pray. In the name that is above every name, touch Amber right now. Oh, Lord, we believe in you, Jesus. We believe in you to keep your hands upon the Lord. We will do surgery tomorrow. Guide the hand of the surgeon. We pray that everything will go well. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we we'll strengthen her, Lord. In the name that is above every name, touch her husband. Touch and encourage them in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We believe in you right now, in the wonderful name of the Lord. We pray that you would touch the neighbor, sister, great way, brother, great, great lady, brother. Lord, the loss of their mother, grandmother, I pray in Jesus' name, you will comfort this family. Let them feel the nearness of your presence right now. You're our comforter. You're our very present help in the time of need. You're the Prince of Peace. Let him feel that now in Jesus' wonderful name. We give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. The youngers are coming right now to receive our weekly offering. Forgive us unto the Lord, and God will bless you for giving. God loves a cheerful giver. So be sure and smile as the offer plate comes to your way. While we're getting ready to give, I do want to mention to you something most of you may be aware of it, but I, I want to just run it by you again tonight, uh, this past Sunday, uh, during service time, Sunday morning, uh, Brother Cook, uh, his truck was parked out here in the parking lot, and after service he went out to get in it, it was gone. Someone had come, he had left the door unlocked. He had his keys, but he had left the doors unlocked. Somehow they got in and got it cranked and, uh, and took off. That's in broad daylight right here in the church parking lot. Uh, I'm glad to tell you they did find it over around Ridgeland, South Carolina, and they did find the people that took it and locked them up. And so, uh, I'm telling you this to let you know it is a church house, church property. There's some folks that doesn't bother them at all. Uh, they'll steal from the house of God just as much as they'll steal anywhere else. So be sure, lock your doors when you come to church and don't leave purses and valuables in sight where people that may come by and look in the windows and see that break your glass. Uh, so just let's uh, keep all of that in mind. Uh, we are uh, looking into getting cameras to put around the property uh, to uh, far situations like this. But uh, in the meantime, make sure you lock your doors and uh, don't leave any bags in your car. Um, even ladies, when you go to the prayer room, don't leave your purses out here. Uh, take them with you, keep them with you at all times. It's, it's sad times that we have to uh, do things like this. We live in a world full of wicked people. Amen. They need the Holy Ghost. They need their lives changed, turned around. So let's uh, just remember these things. Brother Seymour, ask God blessings on this song. Lord, we thank you for the day. Thank you for the blessing that you share with us. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. Praise God. Lord, we ask your blessings on this offering tonight. Oh. Lord, make each of us a cheerful giver. We'll serve it all in your service. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen and amen. Everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Let's worship as we get. Let's pray the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus, God, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Wonderful.
would. Now, before we dismiss to our classes, I do want to uh, remind you of Brother John Christ is going to be preaching for us this coming Sunday. Uh, you don't want to miss. You'll enjoy his ministry, his singing, and uh, piano playing. We're just going to have a great time with the Lord. And uh, then Sunday evening, we know evening service, but at 5 o'clock will be our fall outing. And we want you to invite your friends, neighbors, family members, and let's have a good crowd around here. Uh, we'll be having uh, different uh, games, uh, cornhole, horseshoes, uh, be um, blow-ups, big slide, bouncy uh, blow-ups, cakewalk, um, youth photo shoots. Um, it's a western, uh, it's a western thing this year, so we encourage you to dress up western style. And uh, so we'll have plenty of candy around here for the kids to, to go to our trunk or treats. And uh, if you have not seen Sister Hodge, or let her know if you would like to be involved in uh, fixing the trunk of your car or the back of your truck or whatever. Um, fix it up and have candy ready and available uh, for children who will be coming. And uh, with their bags to fill them up. Uh, see Sister Hodge after service tonight, and uh, I don't know how many we have already. That's we may have six. We need about ten. Oh, we need some more. So uh, you say, well, I don't know what to do. Talk with Sister Hodge tonight after service, and she'll give you some ideas. And uh, let's have a good time around here Sunday. Uh, but let's come expecting a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost uh, with Brother John and Chris. Also, Friday evening at 6.30, uh, choir practice, so please remember that, and then youth alive at 7.45. All right, our children are dismissed to Super Church, and our young people are dismissed to your class. from the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse number 6. Uh, now before I, I get started here, uh, they said Sunday my mic sounded horrible and nobody let me know that I'm preaching a whole message sounding terrible. <laughs> anyway, I don't want that to happen tonight. Are we sounding okay out there? Okay, is it alright? Uh, if it gets to sounding too bad, somebody... Uh, give me a thumbs down. Uh, don't don't do it where everybody sees you. They might think you're doing that about my message tonight. But uh, we don't we don't. I, I like a PA system where it's comfortable for people to listen to. Okay, and so um, hopefully we're okay. If you need to make any adjustments, just make it very small and just make it sound better if you need to. All right, the book of Romans, chapter 8, and the verse number 6. Would you read this aloud with me now? For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And then the book of Philippians, chapter 2, and verse number 5. Philippians, chapter 2, and verse 5. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. I want to talk to you about the three minds of man. And I want the Holy Ghost to just help us tonight. I, I want the last one that we're going to be talking about and that Paul admonishes us to let be in us and that is the mind of Christ. Well, let's pray and ask the Lord to talk to us tonight in the teaching of the Word.
word. God, we're so thankful for the privilege we have to be in your house. I pray that you will anoint me tonight to minister your word, anoint this congregation to hear and to receive your word, to respond to it in a very positive way. We worship you and praise you and thank you for your goodness to us. Touch our minds tonight, we pray, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give him some worship before you see it. Praise God. Lord bless you now, you may be seated. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. The first mind that we want to talk about tonight is the carnal mind. Uh, the very essence of a carnal mind is that of the flesh. To be carnally minded means that one is fleshly minded. And therefore, means uh, uh, that one caters to the desires of the flesh. So when we talk about a person that is carnally minded, we're talking about someone who is fleshly minded, who is always catering to the desires of their flesh. You're never going to really get anywhere with God if that's uh, in the mind that you're going to have, if you're always catering to the desires of this flesh. In fact, the carnal or the fleshly mind, the Bible says, is death. Or to be carnally minded is death. Uh, there, there is absolutely nothing in that carnal mind that is pleasing to God. Look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And then Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 26 says, The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord, but the words of the pure are pleasant words. And then Paul writing in the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. And so, he that sows to this fleshly mind, the Bible tells us, is going to reap corruption, which is the proof of death. Uh, I want you to notice the carnal mind it is not death in a passive sense, for it is even worse than that. It is enmity against God. The carnal mind is enmity against God, and so very bitter that it, the carnal mind, cannot possibly be subject to the law of God. The carnal mind. The carnal mind is rebellious. It bucks against authority. It is selfish. It's self-centered. It does not think of others. It only thinks of self. It only thinks of what uh, it can do to appease and satisfy this old flesh of ours. And of course we know the Bible teaches us that a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Unto the pure, all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. And so we need to remember that the only cure for a carnal mind is crucifixion. Romans chapter 8 and verse 13 says, For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For us to get rid of this part of mind, there's got to be a die. We've got to crucify this old flesh and let the flesh know you're not boss around here. You're not going to rule and reign around here. The carnal mind, we've got to be crucified with Christ. So the carnal mind is dead. But then there is the spiritually minded person. The spiritual mind is of life and peace, the Bible says. It is the evidence of a great change. Life and peace are the results of this spirit-filled 
or the spirit rather creation. Uh, our lives have been changed. When uh, we repented of our sins, uh, we have a change of mind, a change of heart, a change of direction. When you get the spiritual mind, things are going to uh, be different. There's going to be a change. There's going to be life and peace. That's a result of the infilling of the Holy Ghost and the spiritual mind that uh, we receive. The spiritual mind is a mind illuminated by the spirit of truth, enjoying the love of God and seeking the carrying out of His purposes. A spiritual mind. I, I, I want to do what is pleasing to God. I, I want to carry out the purposes that God has for my life. The difference in the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. The carnal mind has no concern about God's purposes and God's plan. The, the carnal mind is just wrapped up in self. It's what my flesh wants to do. It's uh, what uh, my carnal nature wants to do. That's what I'm going to spend most of my time in. You can usually tell if a person is carnal or spiritual. Just look at how much time they spend on certain things. And uh, so that, that carnal mind is going to do the things the flesh wants it to do. But the spiritual mind is interested, more interested in carrying out the purposes of God, having the plan of God fulfilled in your life. That's why the spiritual mind is so very important. Romans chapter 6, verse 11 through 13, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye members as are your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto to God. What are you saying with that? I'm saying that you are alive in God and His will, and thus your physical members are yielded to Him as instruments of righteousness when you have that spiritual mind. We need to remember it is the good tree that cannot bring forth evil fruit. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 18 says a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Anybody want a fruitful man? You want a fruitful life? You want to bring forth fruit? Then you must have the spiritual mind. And then the third mind is the mind of of Christ. He said in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We know just the few scriptures that we've read, and there's a whole lot more that we can say here tonight about the carnal mind, uh, the very fact that it is an enmity against God, does not obey the laws of God, it's only interested in what is appeasing and or satisfying to the flesh. That alone ought to be enough to let us know that God's not pleased with us being carnally minded. And uh, we're not going to get anywhere spiritually if that carnal mind is ruling and reigning in our life. And uh, the scriptures that we've read ought to let us know the importance of making sure that we have a spiritual mind, that we are spiritually minded and more concerned about God's purposes and plan for our life. But now we talk about the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I think we need to note that to be a Christian means literally to be like Christ. There's a lot of folks who claim to be Christians that there's no resemblance at all of Jesus Christ. And that's why there are a lot of people in the world uh, who have a bad taste in their mouth toward uh, so-called Christian people and against religion is because they've seen so many who have claimed to be a Christian, but they're not very Christ-like. If you're going to claim to be a Christian, then you ought to strive and do your best to be more like Jesus Christ. I want to be more like Him and less like this world. I want to be a true, genuine Christian. Amen. And uh, so it is to be like Christ, and therefore we must strive to have the mind of Christ. If we're going to be like Him, we need to have His mind. We need to think like 
he thought. Let this mind that was in Christ be in you. So what about the mind of Christ? Uh, his mind, first of all, was a lowly mind. A lowly mind. Look at Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29. He said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. He had a lowly mind. Look at John chapter 13 and verse 4. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Here he was, God manifest in the flesh, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And yet he lowered himself. He stooped down and washed the disciples' feet. He became a servant to them. He washed their feet. He had that kind of mind. He did not have the mind that said, well, I'm too good to bow down before anybody else. I'm too good to wash anybody else's feet. I'm, I'm too good to be somebody else's servant. No, that was not the mind of Christ, and neither should it be our mind today. If you're going to have the mind of Christ, it's going to be a lowly mind. You're not going to be lifted up with pride. You're, you're going to be ready and willing to become a servant and serve one another. That's the lowly mind. And then he had a pure mind. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 22. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. A pure man. He did no sin, neither was there guile found in his mouth. To have the mind of Christ is not one that, well, they did me wrong and the last thing I do, I'll get them back. <coughs> it's not the mind that says, you do me like this and I'll do you back. No, the mind of Christ is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I mean, when, when Jesus was uh, crucified, uh, in fact, notice um, he said when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. I mean, we're, we're talking about one who had the authority and the power to call 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He let them do what they did to him. He let them crucify him. He let them put nails in his hands and feet. He let them put stripes upon his back. He let them put a crown of thorns upon his head. He let them thrust that spear into his side. He could have at any moment called the angels to his rescue and they could have completely wiped everybody off the map. That's the authority and the power because he was God manifest in the flesh. But he did not do that. He had a pure mind. He said, I know what they're doing is wrong. I, I, I know it's not right, but I, I came here to seek and to save the lost. I, I've got to go through this in order that they can be saved and that they can be forgiven. What a mind. What a pure mind. Amen. Oh yes, that carnal mind is somebody does me wrong. I'm going to get a mind. Vengeance is mine. But no, that's not the pure mind. That's not the pure mind. You talk about me, I'll talk about you. And it won't be down on my knees. <laughs> no. The, the, the pure mind is talk about me as much as you please. I'll talk about you down on my knees. I'll talk to the Lord about you. Yeah, yeah. You know you get a whole lot more accomplished when you do that. Amen. Yeah, a pure mind. A pure mind. It doesn't go around thinking how I can get back to somebody else. 
a pure money. A pure money. And then Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8, the Apostle Paul said, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's the pure mind. It's, it thinks on those things that are honest and on those things that are just, those things that are pure, those things that are lovely, those things that are of a good report, those things that have virtue, those things that have praise. Those are the things that that pure mind thinks on. Jesus was constantly thinking of ways to help somebody, to bless somebody. That's the way you and I ought to be with the mind of Christ. It's what can I do to help somebody? What can I do to be a blessing? Uh, I, I want to be a, a, a friend. I, I want to be friendly. I want to show myself friendly. And that's the way you have friends is show yourself friendly. Amen. But how can I help somebody? How can I be a blessing to somebody else? Think on these things. That's a pure mind. <coughs> Not only that, you have a strong mind. Strong mind. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Folks, you've got to have a strong mind. Because we're all going to go through things in life. We're all going to face situations. We're all going to have trouble. In fact, you know, I believe if, if you feel like that, you know that that you're suffering more than, than anybody else. Just, just take a look around you. You'll probably find somebody that's suffering more than you are. That's right. That's in more trouble than you're in. Right. And having more pain than you have. Yeah. It's like, like they said, I, I complained about not having a good pair of shoes until I saw a man who had no feet. Yes, that's right. You know, so... <laughs> Usually you can find somebody in, a, in worse shape than you are. But we're all going to go through things in life. We're going to face situations. The, the strong mind is going to hang in there. I'm, I'm not going to get weary in well-doing. I mean, you're going to suffer even in times of doing well. But don't become weary in well-doing. Because in due season you're going to reap if you faint not. And so he considered, or considered him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. All of us are going to face storms in our life. Yes. All of us are going to face losses in our life. All of us are going to face setbacks in our life. We're going to face these things. That's just life. Everybody say, that's life. That's life. Doesn't mean God loves you any more or any less. I mean, that's just life. Some things happen. Some things God allows to happen. But when, when you've got a, a strong mind, you, you hold on to that scripture that says, For I know that all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and who are the called according to His purpose. That's a strong mind. You know, you've got to have a, a mind like Job had. He had a strong mind that said, Though God slay me, yet will I trust Him. I may not understand it all, but I'm still going to trust in the Lord. That's a, a strong mind. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to give up. The Lord gave us a good example of this in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Here Jesus is in the wilderness being tempted of the devil. And he uh, fasted for 40 days and nights. And so that body was weak. And, and uh, the, the, the tempter came. And he, he came to him three different times and tempted him. And, and yet that, that strong mind said, it is written. And now when Satan is trying to get him to bow down and worship him, Jesus, with that strong mind, says to Satan, Get thee hence, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Sure, as long as, as, long as you've got breath in your body, as long as your heart's beating, the devil's going to be your enemy, and he's going to fight against you. He doesn't want you to make it. He doesn't want you to be victorious. He doesn't want you to walk on streets of gold. 
He's going to do everything within his power to discourage you and cause you to throw in the towel and give up and quit. That's why you've got to have a strong mind. You need to put the devil in his place. You need to let him know it is written. I know what the Word of God says. I'm not going to bow down to your wishes. I, I'm telling you to get me behind me, Satan. In fact, the Bible tells us if we'll submit ourselves to the Lord, then we can resist the devil and he'll flee from us. You've got to have a strong mind in this end time. Strong mind, a determined mind. I'm not going to give in. Yes, troubles are going to come. Yes, the storms of life are going to toss my boat to and fro. But I know the master of the wind. I know the maker of the rain. He can calm the storm, make the sun shine again. I know the master of the wind. And I know he's on board. He's on board. And there may be times when it seems like I'm fighting all by myself, but you can be assured that he's right there with us. And he's ready at, at, the, at the snap of the finger to come on board and, and to come to our rescue and help us. But it's a strong mind that says, I'm going to hang in there because I know the Lord's on my side. And he's not, he's not, he didn't teach me to swim to let me drown. He didn't bring me this far. He didn't bring me this far for me to quit now. Praise God. i got a strong mind. I've got a determined mind. Everybody, you ever known anybody that was what we call bullheaded? Somebody with a strong mind. I mean, they, I'm, not, I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm going to hang on. You say, well, I feel like I'm at the end of my rope. Well, tie a knot and hang on. you just got to have a strong mind at this end time. Oh yes, we're going to we're going to have we're going to face things in this end time, that, and, and I don't know how much we're going to have to go through uh, persecution or tribulation or whatever before the Lord gets us out of here. But I'm going to tell you, if you'll have a strong mind, you can make it. You hear me? You can make it, but you're going to have to have a strong mind. You're going to have to have bulldog determination. I'm not about to quit. I'm not going to give up. I know the Lord's on my side. I'm going to endure whatever I have to endure. That was the mind of Christ. And that's the mind that you and I are to have. Not only that, he had an unselfish mind. An unselfish mind. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 23. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. He had an unselfish mind. He didn't just think about himself. He thought about others. An unselfish mind. A person that's got an unselfish mind, they think of others. They think about others. A brother or sister's hurting. How can I help my brother or sister? What can I do to help ease the pain? They see somebody going astray. They don't just think about themselves. They, they want to reach out and help somebody. In fact, the Bible said, let him that is spiritual restore such a one. Somebody that's straying away. Let him that is spiritual. Let the man that is spiritually minded. That has the mind of Christ. Let him restore such a one. That's the mind of Christ. Not, not to just push somebody on out the door, but it's I, I'm concerned about others. I'm not just concerned about me. Well, you know, I'll... As long as I make it, that'll be all right. No, I don't want it to just be me. I don't want to be the only one in heaven. I want you to be there. I, I want everybody to be there. Praise God. It's more fun when you've got more people. <laughs> I know it would be great if it was just me and Jesus there, but I, I'm glad it's not going to be that way. I'm glad a whole bunch of folks are going to be there shouting and rejoicing around the throne of God. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to help you. I want you to help me. You see, you see me going through something. I, I want to know that I, I've got somebody that's got a, an unselfish mind that's saying, I love my pastor. I'm going to pray for my pastor. I'm going to think about my pastor. Come on, we need to love one another that way. We need to think about one another that way. Don't just get caught up in ourselves and we forget one another. Man, a person with a selfish mind, they, they're not concerned about getting involved and helping other people, but a person that has an unselfish mind, they'll sacrifice some things to be able to help others. Amen. Yes. Like 
could get on a whole lot of things right there, but I, I must move on. <laughs> Not only that, he had a prayerful man. A prayerful man. Look at uh, the book of Luke chapter 6 and verse number 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. Look at this. And continued all night in prayer to God. If there's ever been a day that we need prayerful minds, we need it today. If there's ever been a day that we need a revival of prayer, we need it today. I mean, it, it, it bothers me when I see people who who have been in the church for a while, who have a problem praying 30 minutes. I mean, I was, I was brought up and raised in, in, the, in the church in Jackson, Mississippi, and had a mom and dad who were actively involved. And, and in those uh, prayer chains that we had, they were not 30-minute prayer chains. They were one-hour one prayer chains. They were two-hour prayer chains. And as a child, I went with mom and dad, and they would raise their hand. I'll never forget it. Brother Kraft would stand behind the pulpit. He'd have somebody write them down, and he'd say, who would pray from uh, 12 midnight to 2 in the morning? And somebody would raise their hand and call their name out. They'd write it down. Who would pray from uh, 2 to 4? Who would pray from 4 to 6? Who would pray from 6 to 8? And I mean, 24 hours, we had people in the church house Praying, and uh, I, I see my mom and dad they raise their hands, and their two hours. I knew those were my two hours. Uh, that's where I was going to be there. You mark it down. I was going to be there. Did I pray those two hours? No. As a kid, no, I didn't. But I'm going to tell you what they kept me in the atmosphere, and that's where I learned how to pray. I, 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 I watched and I observed and I, I listened to those great saints of God in the Jackson church that knew how to pray. And I would, I would listen to them. And oh yeah, I would pray. You couldn't help but pray some in that kind of atmosphere. But uh, as a child, I wasn't able to go as long as these adults did. But uh, I, I learned those things. And I learned to pray. And the older I got, I, I, I learned to pray for an hour. And then I learned to take my own prayer time of two hours shift and pray. And uh, I, I thank God for the examples that I had that taught me how to pray. These, these people had a mind to pray. They had prayerful minds. My mom and dad had prayerful minds. And they took me to prayer meetings and we would pray. We would pray. Uh, not just prayer change, but uh, in, in the prayer room, I had a mom and dad who taught me to pray uh, for people to get the Holy Ghost. I, uh, I watched my mom and dad pray. I don't know how many people through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost in those years coming up. Uh, I don't even want to try to think how many, but uh, and, and many times it was at, at midnight, one o'clock in the morning, especially with those chronic seekers, those... <laughs> <laughs> just wonder what in the world happened. Why, why don't you get the Holy Ghost, you know? And uh, But mom and dad, they would hang in there with them and they'd pray for them and encourage them. And I, I've seen many of them get the Holy Ghost at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, mom and dad turned the lights out in the prayer room and take us home, get us in bed. Then we'd have to get up and go to school. And dad get up at, at 5 o'clock in the morning, work all day, come back in. And sometimes... We're talking about revivals that would go from Sunday to Sunday. It wasn't just Friday night, Sunday morning, Sunday night stuff. It was from Sunday night to Sunday night, seven nights a week. We had revival. We built church. And I watched my dad come in many nights after midnight, get in the bed, get a few hours sleep, get up and go to work, come in just in time, to eat supper and get ready and get back to church again. How could you do that? I'm talking about people that had prayerful minds. They knew the value of prayer. And they would stay in those altars. As long as there was a, a sinner in that altar, you could mark it down. My Hardis and Morales were going to be there praying until they got through praying. Anybody that needed encouragement, any backslider that came in, as long as they wanted to stay in that prayer, Hardis and Morales were going to be there praying with them, talking in tongues, rejoicing. Amen. That's, that's the way I was raised. I was brought up that way. 
And we saw miracles and great things happen because of people who had prayerful mind. We need a revival of prayer today. Amen. Amen. You say, Brother Hodge, I just don't know if I can pray for an hour. Well, you, you need to set that as a goal. Well, how do I reach that goal? Start praying 15 hours a day. When you conquer that, then make up in your mind, I'm going to 30 minutes a day. I'm going to forget about what I've got to do. I'm going to clothe myself in and I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to pray. You, you say, well, I, uh, Lord, I, I can't think of another thing. You can't. Get the names of every member of this church. And if that's not enough, get the names of every missionary that we're partners with and partners in mission. And if that's not enough, get the names of every pastor in the state of Georgia. I'll give them to you if you want them. We'll give them to you. And, and, and pray for every one of these folks every day. You can fill up 30 minutes pretty quick. You can fill up an hour. There's a, there's a lot of needs. There's a lot of people in. And, and not only that, but you need to spend some time not just talking. You need to spend some time listening. Do you like to have communication with somebody that they do all the talking and never give you a chance to talk? You ever seen anybody like that? Yeah, I've been around people like that. They get to talk, 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 talk. And then they take a breath and then I try to say something. And it, oh, 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 oh. I don't want to be rude, you know, so you're not. And then they take another breath. They say, hey! And they catch you right in the middle of what you're about to say. No, no, no. You can't communicate like that. So when you pray, prayer is not just talking. Prayer is listening also. And there needs to be that time. You talk to God and you, and you uh, uh, pour out your heart, your soul to the Lord. Then there needs to be that time of just listening to God. That's all. That's all about prayer. But we've got to have a mind for that. Got to have a prayerful mind ready at any moment that God can speak to you and you can uh, pray, pray. I mean, here it is. He he continued all night in prayer, all night. A prayerful mind. I think we need to pray for that. Lord, I'm a prayerful mind. Let that mind that was in Christ be in. Me, I want to have a prayer for that. And so you, you pray, you increase your prayer time. And, and it's, it's not just all about a certain amount of time. Uh, you know, if all you're doing is just watching you cl watch constantly to try to see when you're going to get to that time, you're, you're, you're just speaking words, you know. It's not all about that. But it's, it's spending quality time and Quantity time with him. How many of you wives like for your husband to spend time with you? Boy, it's quiet. I can't walk, <laughs> man. I do women tonight. <laughs> you, you sure you want that husband to spend some time with you and, and talk to you and, and listen to you and you know you want more than just five or ten minutes a day. They're they're. There are going to be days you, you want him to spend an hour with you. You want him to spend two or three hours with you. There are times you'd like for him to just spend half a day with you. Just y'all doing things together, talking and having fun. Don't you think the Lord feels that way? And don't you think we ought to feel that way about him? Spending time with him, not just this rushing in. Lord, I've got five minutes now. I've got to get this out as quick as I can, you know. I mean, after a while, the Lord's going to say, When are you going to let me talk? When are you going to wait a little bit and let me talk to you? So, we've got to have a prayer for that. And then, the last one is, He had a loving man. A loving man. The book of Luke chapter 23 and verse 34. Then said Jesus, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. You've got to have a loving mind. When people are spitting on you and cursing you. And they're 
crucifying you, saying bad things about you. You got to have a loving mind to look and say, Father, forgive them. A loving mind. It's easier to forgive when you've got a loving mind. A loving mind. And he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2, Paul said, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell of the same. Walk in love. Everybody say, walk in love. As Christ also hath loved us. How are we to love others? The way Christ loved us. How are we to treat others? The way Christ treats us. Amen. He loved us when we were so unlovable. When we didn't deserve it. He loved us in him. He loved us. And so he said, you need to walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. We need to love one another. <coughs> we need that copy love. We need to love. Whether we receive anything or not, we need to love anyway. That's that agape love. And that's the kind of love he loved us with. And he loves us. We make mistakes and he keeps on loving us. Stumble and fall, and he loves us and picks us up. I'm glad he loved me. I'm glad he looked beyond my faults. And he loved me anyhow. With all of my faults, shortcomings, he loved me enough to draw me to him, to call me, to, to help me. He loved us that much. If you're going to have the mind of Christ, it's going to be a loving mind. You're going to love people in spite of their faults, their shortcomings, and their failures, their lack of perfection. You're going to love them anyhow. I know, I know. Some people are hard to love. I realize that. That's why we need the mind of Christ. It's hard to With a carnal mind, there's some folks in no way for you to love. Not with a carnal mind. There's just no way. That carnal mind wants to hate them. We need the mind of Christ and realize that we all have our shortcomings. We all have our faults and all of our, we all have our weaknesses. We all have stumbled. We've all failed. And that's, that's not, you know, giving people a, a license to continue being the way they are when they need to change, you know. Uh, but let's give people time. Let's be patient with people. Let's be tolerant. I'm glad the Lord was patient with me. I'm glad he was long-suffering toward me. Amen. I mean, I'm glad he didn't give up on you. Let's have that love tonight. Let's love one another. Let's be a help and a blessing to one another. Everybody say, let this mind. Let this mind. Let this mind be in you. His mind. What is his mind? A lowly mind. A pure mind. A strong mind, an unselfish mind, a prayerful mind, a loving mind. I want to be a Christian. I want to have the mind of Christ. Is that your desire? Amen. Do you really want the mind of Christ? Would you really like to have that mind? I wonder if we stand together right now and just from our hearts and lift our hands as an act of surrender to him and just pray that simple prayer. God, let that mind that was in Christ be in me. I want, I want to think as you thought. I want to love as you love. I want to have compassion as you had compassion. I want to care as you care. I want to be as determined as you were. Amen. I want to have a strong mind. Give me that mind. Help me, Lord. Let the mind that was in Christ be in me. Everybody say, let that mind. Let that mind which was also in Christ be in you. I want you to notice he said, let.
that thing. Let that thing. You got to do it. Not going to be forced on you. That word let. You got to do it. Let this thing be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Let this mind be in the Lord. Oh, Lord, let the mind that was in Christ be in me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Help me to break this old carnal mind under subjection. To be more spiritually minded in this human time. We need life and peace, Lord. I pray that you will help us. Let the mind of Christ be in us. That we can be a true, genuine Christian. That others can see you in us, Lord. Everywhere we go. People we come in contact with. They can know there's something different about us. What is it? We have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. For the Christian, I pray that you will help us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.